SACD, the Sony, uh, the, uh, the Sony, what is it, Super Audio Compact Disc, right? Right. That Sony came out with. Mm -hmm. You, you were one of the pioneers working on the, on that system. What? Why did they choose DSD? I mean, did they well, know what you know about the way the emotional connections we've talked about? Before? I know. Well, the guy at Sony, who you know, all of us working on the project credit credit with. Uh, the Super Audio CD happening. Yeah, it was a real audiophile, real music lover, brilliant guy, and he knew there was an emotional connection between that needed to be fixed mm -hmm. with with PCM. Mm -hmm. uh, his name was Nishio San, and uh, we we consider him the godfather of, of DSD and the Super Audio CD. And you know, I don't think we'd have it if it weren't for him. He really fought within Sony to make it happen. Uh, and uh, he was totally right. I mean, it, it really does. Well, because technically, you, Sony could have chosen just to do higher sample rate PCM, right? They could. You yeah. know, maybe there, maybe there's still maybe there's still something to that, but I don't think. Well, we're, I'm just we're, curious we're, why. They, so you think because of the Godfather? Is in, well, he he believed in it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, found a way to do it. He yeah. came up with the early recording systems. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, he no, he's an engineer. He's an engineer. Yeah, <clears throat> engineer, audiophile, music lover, all the all the important things. Right. But uh, right. Uh, and he had great ears too. I mean, he, he could he could hear the direction of a cable. Really? I, can, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've done it. So I just follow the arrows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is it true the old story? I, I keep getting conflicting reports that, uh, that the reason that it's seventy minutes is to fit yes. uh, Beethoven's Ninth. Is, yep. that, is that a true story? It is a true story because there's a lot of. If you look no. it up, true story. And, but it wasn't this guy. No, that was. I think it was Oga. I could be wrong. I think it was Oga who, who the president. Of, yes, at uh, the time, the president Sony? of Sony at the time. He, he demanded that. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony fit onto that, a CD, that, right? Onto a format that would fit in a car. Oh, that would fit into the car. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because before you had to flip it over. Right. Which is a little disheartening. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the days of 8-track tape, that would have been a mess. That's right. Well, you know, Tom Stockham had a little card that you'd stick in a reader. and it was, uh, the, the laser would move. It was in a little oh, really? optical card that he'd come up with. Guy who uh, who's Tom? Who, who is he? He was uh, this guy who made some some of the first recording systems that Telarc used to use. Soundstream, mm -hmm. you remember Soundstream? Yeah, I remember Soundstream. Yeah. yeah, he was he was the inventor of that, mm -hmm. and he invented a competing format to the compact disc, which was oh. a little card. Oh, really? Yeah. But obviously, Sony and Philips won on. They won on that. Yeah, they yeah. won on that one. And so, so with the SACD, they chose. DSD. Mm -hmm. and he, he, the Godfather got his way. Yes. And Michio got his way. Yeah. Yep. Which yeah. is wonderful. Oh yeah. Because I mean, it, it, it sounds to my ears so much better than PCM. It's just, it is so easily demonstrable. And one yeah. of the reasons why at Octave Records, you know, everything we do is recorded on the Sonoma system. Right. Um, how long did you work with Sony on that system? Uh. Well, as, a, as being employed by Sony, I think from uh, <clears throat> 1999 to say 2006 or five, oh, something so like that. Almost seven years. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you were the one that was helping them figure out how to use it in the studio, how to make everything editable, or what? I I was working with the engineers trying to define what it should do and mm -hmm. you know how it would work what it needs to accomplish. Yeah. We had a group of uh, engineers in San Francisco uh, that were developing it. And, oh, uh, and that's why they call it Sonoma. That's right. Sonoma County. Exactly. Well, we always considered DSD uh, to be like a fine wine when it comes to sound. So. Well, I like that. That's that that kind of <laughs> that's why we called it that. DSD, though, is increasingly going away. Would you not agree with that? You know, not, maybe not so much. I mean, you know, so many portable devices support it now. Uh, uh, 
tools from people like Pyramix are coming out with, you know, two X and four times DSD that you can actually edit in now. Mm -hmm. So no, I think I think if anything, uh, it, it it's still growing in popularity among audiophiles. But you would know better than me about well, that. It definitely is among audiophiles. <clears throat> I'm just thinking in the general populace, nobody knows. Well, what in it the is. general ge general population, nobody knows what it is. They're not, you know. The education hasn't happened. They haven't been exposed to it. I think it's possible yeah. that if that exposure occurred and uh, people were ed educated as to what it is, particularly now since vinyl is taking off so much, yeah. uh, I think there's a, there's definitely a place for it now. You know, and and just recently we can now stream uh, video with DSD so that makes all sorts of new possibilities with making motion pictures and yeah. and uh, you know content that delivers the emotion that's in the sound or realism that might be in you know in ambient sounds and movies and that kind of thing mm -hmm. I think I think uh, things are about to open up